Meaning you do something a little bit bad and you let the crack open and some comes through and more is bound to happen and the crack's gonna start getting bigger and bigger until the dam is broken and the flood waters come through. Subhanallah. This is why Allah protects the believers when He says, Udhulu fisilmi kafatan. Enter into the fold of Islam totally. Don't let any cracks. Because even a little bit of crack, what's gonna happen over time? It's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. This is the human being recognized this. So now, in the previous surah we found Allah gave us lots of abilities. Alam najallahu aynain wa lisanan wa shafatain. Right? Didn't we give him two eyes? Didn't we give him, you know, a tongue and, and two lips? Right? And now in this surah we're learning, if your nafs is in the right place, you will use the, those eyes for the right things. And you use your tongue and lip for those, the right things. But if that nafs is deviated and there's an imbalance, what's gonna happen? Those same gifts that Allah gave you are gonna be misused. And so when they're misused, you won't go the right way. In the previous surah we found, وَهَدَيْنَا هُنْ نَجْدَيْنَ We showed him, we guided him clearly to two pathways. And in this surah, a tafsir of that. What are those two pathways? فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا those, those are the two pathways. Either the rebellion against Allah or the protection. The word aflaha comes from iflah. And iflah is a used, word used in the Arabic language for really for a farmer that is about to reap harvest. In other words, when the farmer you know, is tilling the soil and doing all this work, he has no idea if it's gonna be a good year or a bad year. But at the end of all of that labor, when it's time for crop season, he's called fallah. That's what the farmer is called. And that's what the word aflaha comes from. In other words, they've attained success, but the success didn't just come to them, it came after a long duration of labor. And usually when aflaha is used, you're going to find some kind of effort mentioned after it. Because you're not just gonna find iflah, success doesn't just come just like that. There are some efforts that had to be made. So what are these efforts? Let's look forward insha'Allah. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّهَا The one who engaged in purifying it thoroughly has already attained success. What is it in purifying it? It is the nafs that's being talked about previously. When Allah says, وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا So the one engaged in purifying it and cleansing it has already in, uh, attained success. The activity of cleansing oneself, Allah calls it success. Not the one who has pure nafs. That may never happen. You, may, you and I may be engaged in the activity of trying to purify ourselves our entire lives. But we'll never get a fully pure nafs. But the one sincerely engaged in this activity, Allah calls that activity itself success. He calls that activity itself success. Then another nuance in this ayah that is a comparison between an ayah we saw before, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى Translation for that one would have been, the one purifying himself would have, or the one who cleanses, cleanses himself has already attained success. And this is a very similar t- translation. زَكَّاهَا 